Real Talk, Real Rugby. And then of course, uh, we are still in the Olympics fever right now, where last week we saw some action-packed good rugby sevens after a long time of not watching international uh, rugby sevens. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe to Asia Rugby Live Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, every social media page on uh, of Asia Rugby Live. Don't forget to like, subscribe and push the notification button should we have new um, uh, content for you guys uh, to, to watch in the future. And of course, guys, for the latest news, don't forget to log on to asiarugby.com for the latest news uh, of rugby from around the world. And of course, the latest rugby, uh, uh, not, not to say rugby, I think general news that I can share with you guys is IOC, the International Olympic Committee, Lex Brisbane, for the 2032 Olympics in the future. So, and of course, I am looking forward to that. It, it, it is 11, 11 years to go, but then again, I think I can start uh, saving some money because Brisbane is not far away from Malaysia. It's about eight hours flight and it is very near to one of our guests today. And of course, today we have some, I, I guess, some legendary guests on the show and we haven't had this uh, in a while so i'm, I'm quite excited to, to talk to our guests well, we have four guests today we have four panelists to talk about the olympics and of course it's a it's a olympics wrap up first of all we have uh, the player who played in the olympic sevens uh, andre jin uh, who played for the korea sevens team we have lamano lameki who played in the rio olympics back in 2016 he made a lot of impact and of course the japan rugby team in that year made a lot of upsets especially when they defeated the new zealand team in the grouping stage and of course we have seven sevens maestro and uh, sevens legend ben gollings who played for england last time who is also if we have uh dan carter in the 15th code we have ben gollings in the seventh code ben who racked up 2,652 points in his career, the most point scorer in Sevens history. So I'm quite excited to talk to Ben tonight. And of course, we have our mana, we have our Fijian brother, Fijian Kiwi brother, I would say, Lotte Rakambula, who is the head coach of Thailand, former uh, Sevens player, New Zealand Sevens player. And guys, thank you very much for being here today. Okay, first of all, I want to talk to Andre. Uh, Andre, the, the Olympics is finally over and the results didn't translate uh, the effort that you guys put in. Uh, but what is your take from the whole tournament, Andre? Hi, yeah, uh, great to be here with, with so many uh, Sevens legends. Um, yeah, the Olympics for us, uh, it was a 20-month ordeal, right? So we qualified in November 2019 and uh, the Games actually took place in July uh 2021. So there was a long period there where it was more taxing, I think, on the mind than it was on the body, just just knowing that you're going to the Olympics, but preparing for almost 20 months. Um, as you said, the results didn't really go our way. Uh, we were kind of expecting that, though. I mean, every athlete is going to play a game, play games to put in their be best performance and try to win. But we knew we were outgunned. Uh, and we were outmatched and definitely the least experienced team there, but what an experience. And for us, uh, it was just a great opportunity to introduce uh, the great sport of rugby to the Korean people. A lot of Koreans don't know rugby. So what a platform to have uh, live rugby on national broadcasters home at home here in Korea. Did, did, did you have any, you know, Korean kids messaging you on social media after that asking uh, to you about rugby? Yeah, no, a lot of messages uh, through what we have, what we call Naver here. So it's our Google search engine, Naver, and also through Instagram, just a lot of kids, a uh, lot of just what what you would say, regular sports fans who support Team Korea, but uh, first time uh, experiencing rugby. So, uh, so far, the, the reaction, we've been back about a week now, but it's been a very good reaction, and especially the media stuff. Rugby, we never get any... Uh, attention from the national media but you know um this week last week it's it's been uh it's kind of a media circus first time in my life and uh hopefully we just got to keep that momentum going oh that's great man that's great to hear and of course i think uh there's so much uh, room for korea rugby to improve uh, definitely in the, in the future and i want i want to move over to lemano lemano uh you competed in the rio olympics uh with the japan team in 2016 uh, making a statement by upsetting uh one of the favorite teams of the tournament from what you can see 
you know, can, can you comment on the difference between uh, the Rio Olympics and uh, Tokyo Olympics that we, we've just seen last week? Uh, <clears throat> it, was, no, it was a good experience, but I think this time around, like Andre said, there, there wasn't certainty on when the Olympics would actually kick off. So I think some teams would have, would have been a bit underdone. I know for a fact that the Japan team were uh, nowhere near where they should have been, although they did have a lot, lot of time to prepare. But just the rugby in general, I think the, the level was, was quite high still with all the, the top tier nations. It was a, a lot of good games there. Um, Argentina were, was a dark horse there. I don't think that they were going to go that well. But when they beat Australia in the first game, I think it just set the tone for them right the way through. Um, Fiji were always going to be there. I think Great Britain started off really well. Um, but then I think losing Mitchell uh, in the quarterfinals, I think it was, sort of just derailed them a bit. But the, the quality of rugby was, was pretty good to watch. Um, you see a lot of social media posts about a lot of celebrities over in America, you know, who don't really know much about rugby, are starting to post about rugby. So I think it's moving in the right direction. Oh, that's great to hear from from that that perspective, uh, Lumano. And, and of course, I think one of the things that I would like to highlight, and I think uh, you would have made the difference if you were in the seventh team of uh, Japan. <laughs> anyway, you know, moving along. Um, to old ben, now. okay. <laughs> before before we before we go di dive into uh, you know uh, the Olympics uh, sevens, I want to talk about that. Ben, can you update our our viewers what? have you been up to these days because we haven't heard much of ben gollings uh, you know lately <laughs> yeah i think uh, like a lot of people um you know the uh, this this last this last 18 months has been uh, an interesting one and challenging and has been about adapting so sadly for me obviously i used to travel quite a bit with with work and, and working within the rugby ranks and consulting and that kind of came to a bit of a halt with international travel. So I've been um, been doing a number of different things. I've been I've been coaching locally. Um, I've been doing a lot of work online, both uh, in the mental health space actually, and working with 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 athletes of all levels, as well as then online from a coaching perspective. Um, and then I did also transition for a little while. Uh, um, completely out of sport which which was quite nice for a little bit i've never really had a full break out of rugby so i i went and uh did some finance for a while just as a, a bit of a new challenge um which was which was really good fun great experience definitely um something that uh i i learned a lot from but not something i want to pursue fully so um i'm happy now that i'm kind of back in the back in the space i love and and um looking to really uh maximize on opportunities now as we hopefully start to come out of the the pandemic and the situation we're in uh, i never saw you as a as a finance guy ben <laughs> anyway uh, you know okay <laughs> let's dive deep uh, let's dive back into into you know uh, rugby uh, olympics rugby and uh, of course we, we wanted i wanted to uh, touch a little bit of the uh, china rugby team as you were a part of the coaching team last time and uh, did you expect them to put uh, a on a good uh, such a good performance uh, last last weekend uh, in in answering that question yes um i i said it's always difficult to say yes but I, they've always had a, a huge amount of potential that chinese team and i when i was working with them i could see that potential um and it was just a matter of uh, of spending more time with them and being able to nurture and develop that 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 potent that potential in them and i think in the last uh, period of time they've really come together as a as a strong group of, uh, of 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 ladies and they've got some talented young girls and the likes of uh chung kai Yi, emily who leads from the front and and the captain also and I, they you know i think they, they were always worthy of causing upsets and I think it was a, a deserved kind of finish for them. Finish, I think it was around seventh, but uh, it was fantastic mm. to see. And you know, from an Asia rugby perspective, it's great to see them competing on that on that world stage, which I think they they looked comfortable doing. I think it's worth mentioning that Ben Gollings was the one who identified Chen Kei and a few other players that is in the China women's rugby team now. So yeah, hey, credits to you. I think credits has uh, has to uh, be given to you, Ben, for for identifying such good players 
for the Chinese rugby team. And I, I want to move over to Lotte. And uh, Lotte, as a, as a coach uh, in Asia now, Lotte, and having so much knowledge about Asia now, uh, how would you sum up the performance of the Asian teams in the Olympics? Well, uh, sorry, Cup guys. Uh, thanks for having me uh, uh, on the show. Uh, and uh, good day, gentlemen. Good to see uh, uh, you boys back. Uh, yeah, no, for me, as we talked about it um, uh, last week, I think uh, Japan probably the you know the most disappointing one out of all of them. Uh, and and that's uh, not only the the men's team, also the women's team. Uh, I think they you know they they were going in as a, you know a top performer than than the Chinese team, but. Uh, I think, uh, you know, there's a few issues going on in there. So, uh, you know, they'll be disappointed with that. Uh, and uh, like Andre was saying, you know, Korea, you know, I, I, I thought they did well. And as the game progresses, they they tend to, you know, step up another notch and goes with, uh, you know, a bit of experience and a bit of belief. And it, it was so good to see, you know, they, they tend to step up. Uh, uh, you know, Japan, uh, the men's team, uh, massively disappointed. But I think they, they, they know that now. Uh, they know that now, and and I think uh, like uh, uh, Mickey was talking about it last week. I think the whole thing, uh, you know, need uh, restructured and things like that uh, in their system. But but for us, uh, you know, in terms of rugby, uh, out this part of the world, I think you know we it, it was quite pleasing to see just after the the World Cup uh, 15s, you know, the rugby starting to fade off, and it was so good to see rugby sevens, you know, and and how mm. good the the games is, you know, it puts rugby back up again, you know, up there with uh, with other sports, you know, with footballs and stuff, you know, around this part of the world. So really, really good to see uh, rugby in the in the level of competition in uh, in the Olympics. Yeah, for sure, man. I was I was excited to see the, the games, men's and women's. In fact, to be honest, I thought the women's uh, competition was really, really exciting. Uh, first time watching, uh, my heart almost stopped when uh, <laughs> New Zealand was going against Fiji in the semis. <laughs> watching women's rugby, first time I ever. You, anyway, <laughs> I bet you were cheering for Fiji, were you? I <laughs> come on, bro. Come on, you know. <laughs> anyway, uh, you know, since since. Uh, since Lotte was touching about Japan's uh, Japan rugby team, probably uh, Lamano, you can comment a little bit uh, when you know Jap the, the Japan men's team, which you were in Mano in 2016, had such a good outing uh, uh, and, and performance in the Rio Olympics. Uh, but the results were were not on the other side this time around. Do you think the team was mm. under pressure to emulate the 2016 results? I think so. There, there was there was always going to be pressure there because that we were the home we're the home team, the home nation. So, um, and there's always a little bit of pressure to perform. But from from Rio's standpoint as well, going to fourth in the world, you know, that in itself was a big achievement. But to now, I think only winning one game, but like they they had from from that Rio performance, uh, we were able to get like professional sevens players now where they could not go to their top league team to just professionally play sevens for Japan. So I felt they should have done a lot better than, than what they did. But um, no, internally, I think there's a lot of things that have to change in the program for not only the men's, but the women's team of, of Japan are to succeed. Um, they've got the, the facilities, they've got the program and stuff. I think you just need the right people in places. But like like they're saying, um, Korea, Korea did well. I personally thought, you know, they they did a lot better than a lot of people would have thought they did but personally japan were quite disappointing for me uh saying that uh ben probably you can talk about the women's japan women's team when uh you know they didn't have the performance that they they wanted but the thing is um before be, before the Olympics, the Japan women's team was one of the uh, consistent teams in the uh, in the seven series. Uh, saying that, watching the Olympics, uh, what, what the I uh, from my from my perspective, their uh, their loss was mostly based on physical physicality. What do you think, Ben? Yeah, I think it's interesting actually. I I, um, I was on. I was on a podcast uh, the week leading into the sevens with uh, with one of the um, Japanese female players, and she was the ex captain. Um, and it was interesting hearing her take because uh, it was 
one, it was interesting not to see her taking part uh, when she played such an instrumental part in that team and was, I think, such a strong cog in the wheel of their success. And I think maybe there was a bit of a um, selection um, discretion there in terms of the way they selected the team may, uh, and not, not maybe going for some of their more experienced players in, in a big tournament like the Olympics. Um, you know, it's always... It's not easy for, for coaching teams to get it, but I was interested by those selections. Um, I do wonder if they suffered without having some of that uh, experience out there. And then I think it was always going to be the case that um, they're, they're very strong in the Asian competition, but when it comes up against a lot of the other teams, there's, there, is a, there is a distinct uh, physical difference. And it's not that they can't compete, but if they have the kind of year that a lot of people had where they've, they've lacked in the ability to play a lot of game time and, and have that consistent hit out against those those bigger, more physical teams, it's hard to emulate it in your own training. And I think they probably got caught off guard a little bit there. And you know, it was always going to be a big call for them. But um, I think we, 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 we didn't see the, uh, the true strength of what they have uh, they have shown in the past. Yeah, for sure. I I I think so too. They uh, they had, they had so much potential, and, and I thought the Japan women's team would uh, you know explode in this uh, the recent Olympics, but uh, that didn't materialize. Anyway, I think uh, I, I want to move back to uh, Andre. And Andre, you you were competing with some of the best teams uh, in in the world, especially in your pool with uh, New Zealand, Argentina, and Australia. Looking back. You reckon the team had a val valuable experience uh, facing some of the best teams that you guys had? Yeah, you know, we were in the pool of death and if we're included as the weakest team and that's the pool of death that just goes to show the strength of the other three teams in our pool. So when the pools were announced, uh, you know, we're there to play the best anyways. But uh, yeah, definitely a tough pool. Um, yeah, I mean, we don't have... I think the stack came out. We have played three World Series level events in five years, whereas each team that has played in that comp would have been in 10 tournaments a year. So I think that huge wealth, uh, that gap in just experience and know-how at that level definitely showed. Um, we The last World Series event we played was March 2020. Then obviously the COVID situation happened. We were able to play one warm-up tournament in LA against Argentina, the US, and, and GB. And that was a bit of a wake-up call for us. But uh you know, when, when you go 17 months without competition, I think Ben just alluded to it, like we don't have a, a big depth, uh, a player, a big player pool in Korea. So we weren't able to go 100% against each other because we it was half trying to get conditioned for the Olympics, half trying to uh, limit the amount of injuries. And we only had one tournament or six games uh, in 17 months before the biggest uh, tournament in, in, the, in our lives. So um Definitely difficult getting ready for it, but you know, again, uh, no excuse for for missing that many tackles. I think, yeah. <laughs> but I think I, I think overall, uh, your, the the performance of the Korean team didn't translate uh, with the effort that you guys put in. But uh, and I think good effort uh, because this is your first uh, Olympics uh, for the Korean team. So I think uh, that you should give yourself a pat on the back, uh, Andre, and not feeling uh, any guilt or, uh, you know, mis uh, tackling any players in, in, especially in the Olympics, obviously. And uh, Lottie, um, looking at the future, what do you think Korea need to work on to compete against uh, the other teams in the Olympics? Oh, you know, Andre pretty much nailed it. You know, it's game time. Uh, and that's a saying that we know back home, you know, to be good at sevens, you've got to be playing, playing sevens. So, you know, and that, uh, as, as an example, you know, we can see, I know there's a lot of people that really looked at the Olympic as, wow, you know, the, the one just finished last week and looked mm. at the games and going, wow. But to be honest, you know, to be honest, I think because of the score and some of the, uh, the Munich teams really put a fight like Argentina as an example. But to be honest, you know, if I, if you, if we looked at it properly, I think the level, you know, with the with the top the top teams, their level dropped a bit because they are used to we they're going into the Olympics without a World Series tournament. So if you see the previous uh, big events like the World Cup uh, in two thousand and uh, I think must have been seventeen, or the Commonwealth Games, or you know those those big events, those teams were really prime and and had a you know the coaches can really move their combination you know what suited 
for that big event. So this one here, everyone was underdone and, and I bet it was stressful for the coaches to pick a right combination. Mm. So, you know, so, the, you know, it, it is, it is good to see a lot of people are excited about the, 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 the sevens uh, tournament last week at the Olympics, but to be honest, they haven't seen the, they haven't seen the real, the real sevens. And I'm talking about, you know, going back to correct last the question is, is the continuity, you know, it's very surprisingly the tournament last week, uh, you know, a lot of, which is, which is, really uh different you know to to actually you know build pressure and retain those ball you know it was so surprisingly less teams were able to do that you can see the counter racking and defense mm. were coming through and changing the game so that comes with game time so all these teams were not playing in the series to to build that momentum and and go into this this olympics so that's for me was one of the big things so if korea you know to to get on you know and, and perform at that level it's about holding that ball and you know and and, and it sounds so simple but there's a lot, you know, to take in technical work, mindset. So those things come with game time. So, you know, that, that would be my thing, my take for, for Korea, you know. So more games, the better. Well, the thing is, I think leading up to the Olympics, especially the qualifiers, um, a lot of people were expecting Hong Kong to qualify. But instead, Korea did the unexpected and beat Hong Kong in the final to qualify for the Olympics. So that says a lot of, of Korea, of their potential of what they can do. And obviously, uh, can uh, a team like Korea can make upsets, just like the Japan team back in 2016 in Rio making upsets. So uh, we shouldn't write any teams off. I, I would say like, like, like what you said, Lotte, uh, a, a few days ago, we were talking about all these uh, you know big teams and small teams especially in this uh, leading up to this tournament and uh ben i think i want to i want to shift over to to china and and of course Ben, we saw a totally different china rugby team in the olympics and of course credits to the head coach of china ewan mcintosh and the coaching team from what you saw last time what changed the style of play size what, what can you comment on that <laughs> I, I think um, with, with the Chinese, it, it was a matter of being able to, uh, some of our experiences, connect the right girls together. And I think through this last period and, and the growth of the Chinese team has been seeing that um, ability to to want to work together for that, that bigger picture. You know, in China, there's quite a big stake for the for the for the for the girls and the and the boys to perform for their provinces because of the um, because of the enormity of the Asia Games, and I think, you know, I, I, what I see here is this 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 team has really come together and connected uh, for the for the for the cause of the Olympics, and you, you've seen the combinations they put together were fantastic, and and I think they've also just matured as a group. They were quite young when I was there, you know, a lot of these a lot of these girls, and but now they're four years, five years, a bit older with a li little bit more rugby knowledge and experience, and I think you're seeing all of that come together and. Um, Ewan's done a good job of, of nurturing that with this with this group of girls and, and getting them performing, um, knowing knowing full well that they always they always had that that potential and, and they looked uh, they looked like they really wanted to be out there and fighting and, and enjoying the experience and I think the, the fantastic thing is that knowing what type of a country China is in terms of how seriously they take their Olympic sports, them making the Olympics and then performing as well as they have will will have a really positive effect. On, on on the growth of rugby i'm sure as as similar as what we've seen with, with andre and, and korea well saying that when you when you, when you mention potential so what do you reckon is the potential for the china rugby teams in the next olympics oh i think if if the if the chinese keep developing and they create a a really strong program and pathway that that leads to that kind of pinnacle with the olympics they've got every opportunity to keep building from strength to strength they've got an abundance of quality athletes it's about again being able to give them the tools to perform consistently at that level and i think if they if they do get that recipe right you, you you'll see them become quite strong uh not just on the asia series but hopefully on the world series but i, I think that's the same for for a lot of the asia teams they're you know, this Olympics has been what four teams competing in the Olympics from Asia. Pretty, fa pretty fantastic. And um, you know, it'd be great to see that happen again in, in the next Olympics. And you know, every team has got the ability to to keep growing and developing with the with the with the 
with the type of athletes they have. So, you know, I think from that perspective, we'll, we'll see, we'll see some other great performances ahead. Well, for sure. Amen to that. Amen to that. And, 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 uh, I want, I want to move over to Lemano. Uh, how do you think the team's performance, uh, will impact the overall interest towards rugby as you are, uh, a social media user and, and what, what do you think of the the, the 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 performance of all the Asian teams, especially, will impact overall interest towards rugby. Oh, this time was only I was only had two in the women's and two in the men's. So I think the more exposure we can get for Asia rugby, maybe more like a, a World Series, get more of the Asia teams into the World Series, and would only make rugby bigger for Asia. But as you see all over the world. Um, rugby starting to, to get noticed pretty big, even with America and the, the Major League Rugby. I think it's only a matter of time, but um, to get people interested into rugby, I think sevens is the pathway for that. Uh, not a lot of people know all the technical rules and don't want to watch 80 minutes of scrumming and mauling the whole time. It just puts you to sleep. So I think if we can get more sevens tournaments <laughs> and more people watching <laughs> and following sevens, maybe get more Asia um, legs to, to the tournaments, you know, that would be good because the Sri Lanka also another very good team. Um, imagine if you can get two of those Asia teams as core teams in the World Series, and you can get two coming up you know, as an Asia qualifier, and then in the repertoire you get have potentially four teams, you know, out of the twelve as, as Asian teams. But I think um, there's a lot of good athletes all around Asia. I think they just need to be more exposed to rugby. I think we're moving in the right direction, but I think sevens needs to get more exposure than you know than the fifteens does most of the time. Yeah, for sure. And I think with the with the seven series confirmed, Dubai Sevens, Hong Kong Sevens, um uh Dubai Sevens, Hong Kong Sevens, and I can't remember the other one, the other leg Singapore, confirmed. Singapore. I think that's Singapore. gonna that that that's actually a good news for, for sevens, uh for the seven circuit. Uh, at least from there we can grow our fan base and, and of course the, the game can get bigger. And uh Lottie, uh, uh talking about talking about this Olympics, right? Uh, what can other teams like yourself in Thailand, what can other aspiring teams take from uh, this Olympics? Oh, you know, like what the boys said before, you know, to have a couple of uh, teams from this part of the world, you know, in there competing against the best, it's, uh, you know, gives a lot of, uh, for me, psychologically, gives a lot of beliefs uh, to, to a lot of players, you know, just even talking to my players over here, you know, they're really excited and, you know, going through this pandemic, you know, it's very, very tough for everyone. And, uh, and you know, this brings back smiles in people's faces and brings back hope. And, you know, our players are down, you know, as, as I can you know, imagine, and I can't blame them. You know, they, you know, they're down, they can't be bored the training because they, you know, it's tough, you know, with, with the lockdown and stuff. But watching the, the Olympics and seeing the likes of China, Korea, you know, the two Japanese uh, team in in their competing you know it really gives them hope and and believe that you know they can also be part of that uh you know going back to thailand you know we we competed uh you know really well uh in sri lanka uh in, in 2019 and to see you know the, the hong kong and kazakhstan went on to the you know in the women's competition to come through from the repercharge and losing in the semi-final and then to see the, the two teams in the in the semi final in the finals uh, Russia and France went through and and France able to make it into the finals you know that gives a little bit mm. of belief that you know sevens in sevens you know anything can happen so it's definitely very exciting uh, for us uh, over here in Thailand and I'm I'm sure it's the same as well happening in um, in other other parts of uh, of Asia too yeah for sure man and and I think that was one of the results that. Uh, everyone was surprised when France from a repertage yeah. tournament got into the final. No one Damn. expected that, definitely. Mm. And uh, and I think, uh, like you said, you've always said to me, I think a few times with sevens, yeah. you can't write any anyone off. So, yeah, yeah, yeah for that's sure. the beauty of yeah. the sevens uh, yeah. court, right? Yeah. And uh, Andre, I want to talk to you about the Asia 7 series. <clears throat> what do you think? What, what are you looking forward to the, the Asia 7 series? after the Olympics, you know, you played in the, probably one of the biggest stages of the rugby, uh, rugby competition. So in terms yeah, of well, the seven I series. Think, 
Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I think the ahead. other panelists will have more experience than me, but that's one thing that uh, the last week I've been going through is, man, 20 months getting ready mentally for the Olympics. Now, now what's next? You know, it kind of, as an athlete, I just probably uh, played at the biggest stage I'll ever play in my life. Um, but, uh, you know, we've heard some rumors about the Asia series, you know, obviously there were supposed to be three legs. There's rumors that there's going to be two legs. I don't know if I'm allowed to share it here, but I believe the, the, the <laughs> leg in Incheon next month is being postponed. There's talk, there's talk about a couple legs in Dubai in November. So look, as an athlete, we're, we're used to this now because the last year and a half is, is basically you have to be flexible with the schedule due to the COVID situation, but we just want to get back. We just want those tour tournaments to be fixed and then just get back as soon as possible. There's a couple players that will transition out because of age. And I'm sure Charlie, our high performance director, will be bringing in some, some youth to the team. But the next thing is qualifying for the Sevens World Cup. Asia has two tickets. So I believe um, Japan, ourselves, China and Sri Lanka and Philippines will be really pushing for those two spots. And then uh, the Asian games next year. So just around the corner, there's two big there's two big tournaments for us to to continue the momentum of uh, Korea rugby going. And for us, um, you know, it's about okay. We went to the Olympics, we got a lot of uh, attention, but how do we keep that? How do we keep that flow? How do we keep that attention? So I think the best thing to do is play as quick as possible and qualify for another major tournament. Uh, nice. it's, it's the same thing gonna you know pick up uh, from where you guys left, uh, which is the Olympics uh yeah i mean look i think we'll have august off you know a lot of the boys will be back in their clubs our, our company teams um and we have august off but hopefully in september we'll be we'll be getting back together as a group but i think ben touched upon it and i and i look at the china team and and hopefully the players won't get in trouble because they've been using some instagram i know uh or sorry some social media i know uh China has restrictive internet, but it looks like China now has a performance center. And if you look at a lot of the Olympic teams that did well, they actually have national mm. training centers. So the France, the French women can use a national training center. We don't have a national training center. Japan sevens doesn't have a national training center. Um, Argentina, New, Ze um, New Zealand, Fiji, the whole nation is a training center. But I think uh, <laughs> Korea rugby, you know, the biggest thing for them, for us right now, is 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 just getting a centralized location and, and maybe getting some central contracts, just like Canada, the U.S., and some of the other emerging nations have taken uh, taken advantage of. And and hopefully, if you look at Hong Kong, you look at China, they actually probably have better pathways and plans in place than we do. We just happen to have a long rugby history and and actually an abundance of talent. It's just about um, realizing our potential with with proper systems in place. So. I think that's what Charlie uh, and our union will be working on in the next month or two is now creating a strategic plan to, to try to qualify for Paris and, and do and win a gold medal at the Asian Games next year. Well, saying that, um, you know, from from the Olympics and also you were talking about the Asia 7 Series, what do you think are your chances for the Asia 7 Series, Andre? Last question for the Korean rugby team. Yeah, I think with this group that we have, and we have a couple of guys that didn't make the team, a couple, couple university boys that are really showing some talent. I think if we can just spend a good amount of time together uh, coming off the momentum of the Olympics and with our coaching staff right now, I think we'll be challenging Hong Kong and Japan for those top two spots in the Asian series. Um, I know Japan's got to get their, you know, if Japan gets their act together, no one in Asia can touch them. Um, I played against Limano in 2015 and that core group went on to, to beat the All Blacks in 2016. And, you know, we couldn't even come close with the, the level of talent they have. So hopefully Japan can, can sort themselves out. Oh, maybe they don't better for us in Korea, but for Asia rugby, I don't think they do. <laughs> um, but uh, I think, you know, us in Hong Kong might be pushing, and China and Sri Lanka will be pushing for that second spot in uh, to qualify for the World Cup through the Asia series. And then for us, you know, the, the Olympics was, was kind of, the goal was just a coming out party for to introduce rugby to Koreans. But the real goal for us in camp is actually the gold medal at the Asian Games. And I think with this group and with this coaching staff, uh, if we just have enough time together and enough tournaments together, just like Lottie said, um, I think there's a real good chance that we could uh, be challenging for that gold medal in, in Hangzhou in 2022. Yeah, I agree with you. Lemano is untouchable. <laughs> I'm sure you had a you, you had the worst time Superstar. defending against him, right? <laughs> anyway, okay, we have some we have some Facebook questions from our from our view, viewers. Let's see who. What are the questions? 
I think I heard the, the president is asking a question. Oh, there you go. Okay, confirmation two legs for Asia Rugby Seven will both be held in Dubai in November. Asia Rugby Seven Series this year is the pathway for Rugby World Cup 2022 Sevens in South Korea. So please check the calendar on www.asiarugby. Now, thank you very much, Mr. President. Guys, Abdullah, Al -Dala, <laughs> there you go. Straight from the president. <laughs> Um, I think this is to Andre. So Andre, take note. Yeah, this is the tournament that's happening. <laughs> <laughs> so two men slots and two women slots for a rugby world cup 2022. Of course, this is the rugby world cup uh, sevens 2022, and all the best uh, to the top eight Asian teams in November 2021 to clinch the slots. There you go, straight from the president's uh, comment, not mouth comment. Okay, some more. We have Perfect. some more. Asia Rugby is working closely. Again, the President of Asia Rugby is working closely with World Rugby to award wild cards to Asian teams at the HSBC World 7 Series, especially the three legs held in Asia, UAE, Hong Kong, and Singapore. Oh, yeah, Singapore 7s. Yeah, Singapore 7s is the other tournament that is confirmed. <laughs> oh. And what else? Okay, so now with all that, with all that, uh, uh, okay, let's go to let's go to Lemano. So, what do you think with all uh, whatever the president said just now? All the uh, competition confirmed. So, do you think this will um, be a, a good stage for Asia Rugby to showcase their talents and, of course, develop talents for Rugby Sevens? Yeah, it definitely is. If if they if they can bring that in, not only the two slots but the wild card and stuff, but I think just having two tournaments, two Asia League tournaments is you know, it's exactly what we don't want. Um, oh, I know the pandemic and stuff, but we're going to need a lot more game time, like Lito was saying. For, for all any of the Asia teams to get better, you know, you can't just train all the time and improve from there. You've got to play consistently. So got to find out a way to get more Asia League series, maybe. Um, six, I think six minimum would probably help bring up the rugby of it. But... You know, um, you never compete in the World Series is probably the number one priority because, like Ben Ben knows and, and he was saying, you could play good in Asia, but once you go into that World Series, that like the physicality and the speed is just a different ball game, and, and you tend to get shocked like that. So, I think maybe just more more game time, more tournaments, more opportunities for Asia teams to play. Well, saying that, saying uh, you know, if, if you talk about potential and stuff, Ben, uh, the first time we met was in 2012, but that was in Kota Kinabalu in Sabah for the Asian Seven Series. You were coaching Sri Lanka back then. So, of course, it's been a long time. That was, a, I think, that was the first time that you coached uh, an Asian team. And of course, after that, you've coached a few teams like the China rugby team and stuff. So, saying that, how do you see the potential of Asia rugby as a whole? I, I having spent a lot of time in Asia, um, I think there's, as I said to earlier, there's a huge amount of potential. Um, there's a lot of untapped potential, and there's a lot of potential that probably doesn't realise its potential that really needs to be unearthed. But ultimately, saying you know, there's there's a lot of good happening in Asia rugby, and there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, great people behind a lot of the places that are developing rugby. And I think there's a lot of great infrastructure within the rugby in order to allow it to really develop. And it's been placed on a world stage now. The last few times we had the World Cup 15s, we've now had the Olympics. I think really now's the time to use that as a catalyst to, to de develop it even further. And as everybody's touched on here, I think one of the big points is that in order to really start to meet that potential, there has to be... Um, competition and I think that means more competition within the Asia nations themselves but I also think they'll really benefit from playing externally against better teams and it, it really doesn't matter about the winning and the losing at this stage the more they play high level teams the more they're going to get used to it and it's actually going to raise their game so that they'll become more and more competitive because you can train and train and train but the ability to be able to experience that, something that Andre could probably take away now from having experienced the Olympics playing against these top teams, you can start to draw on that and realise, OK, this is where we need to take our game to the next level. We've experienced it. We understand it now we can. And it's very hard to do so unless you play those games. So 
yeah, I think there's huge amounts of potential, and I think we're going to, uh, you know, I, be, I really believe we'll see Asia rugby grow and, and grow, and in doing so, we'll see them competing as, as long as they're able to create more competition and, and, and play a lot of the harder teams. Oh, thanks for that, Ben. And of course, I think I agree with you. There's a lot of potential for Asia. Yes, Asia is a huge continent, right? And I, I think we, we, we can take one question from uh, from the audience. And I think this, this uh, I want to give this question to Lottie. Uh, is there any chance for Japan or Korea to get gold, to get the gold medal uh, in the sevens uh, rugby for the next Olympics? What do you think, Lottie? <laughs> oh, sure. You know, anything is possible in, in sevens. And, uh, you know, and I look at, uh, you know, like uh, just the last weekend, you know, you can see Argentina, you know, look at, look at those boys. You know, they're very, very young side. And, you know, I think they, they've only played three, four tournaments, you know, in, in, in the top level, like in the World Series. So, you know, you, you can see, you know, those, those, those boys, you know, they really put some beliefs, you know, in, in like uh, the Mino teams, you know, you can, anything can happen. So definitely, and, and like the boys talked about, you know, especially this part of the world, you know, Sevens Rugby really suited, you know, the, the way, you know, the, the, the boys uh, and the girls, the, you know, the, the, the people that are built around here, you know, very quick and nippy. So, you know, definitely, mm. but I think it comes back to the, like, uh, you know, the boys mentioned it, it comes back to the structure and it comes back to, you know, everything like from the bottom, grassroots rugby and build it all the way up. You know, you can't just, you can't just focus on, on the top, top, uh, top uh, level, you know, so you got to start from the bottom. So definitely they can, you know, anyone can, 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 can make it to that, you know, to that level. It's just, you know, comes back to that development and putting, you know, putting the effort into where it's supposed to go. So, what do you think, Andre? Do you think you can win the gold medal in the next Olympics? <laughs> I think we're going to set a more realistic goal of trying to qualify for the next Olympics. But um, <laughs> uh, I think the next one is going to be a bit difficult. But hopefully, this was a springboard. And, and I think I, I, I told one of the reporters after the game, if a thousand kids pick up a rugby ball after seeing Korea rugby on TV, maybe in about 15 to 20 years' uh, time when these young boys are put in a proper... Uh, use systems proper pathways and, and we create a high performance program i couldn't see why in about you know three or four olympics from now we could compete for a, a podium spot just like Lotti said we have so many nippy light-footed players here in korea that can step you out of a phone booth it's just about um getting them together and teaching them our great sport you are so charismatic my friend and i hope i hope uh one day someday korea will get to uh where you were say just now you know to to get where they want to probably be up there Olympia. together with the tier one nations anyway guys thank you very much uh andre lemano ben lotti you guys have been great your your insights your knowledge your experience and of course uh, talking looking back at the rio olympics and looking back uh, uh at Ben's experience together with Lotte last time they used to go out together after each tournament. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys. Enemies anyway, guys, on the field, but, you know, love each other <laughs> off the field, eh, bro? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you very much for, for sharing this, uh, you know, your experience, your thoughts on, on the Olympics. And of course, hopefully, in the next Olympics, we'll be talking again together. Let's not wait, wait till the next Olympics, probably in the next Asia 7 Series probably i'll be calling uh the same panelists uh to talk about uh, the, the tournament and whatnot anyway guys uh, pl uh, for the panelists <laughs> please stay please stay on the line we want to take a picture a group picture together and to you guys to the fans to the audience thank you very much uh, for being with us on asia rugby live tonight you guys are legends thank you very much for the questions thank, thank you very much mr president for the cl clarification uh, and uh, hope to see you guys again in the next Asia Rugby Live uh, episode three. And uh, what we'll talk about—that is that—that's a surprise. So then, I'm Rod, and this is Asia Rugby Live.